Welcome once again to uh, Worship on the Web. In the state of Indiana, COVID vaccines are now available for healthcare workers, first responders, and people 65 years of age or older. Uh, you can visit vaccine.coronavirus.in.gov to schedule an appointment. Uh, if you live across the state line, go to michigan.gov backslash COVID vaccine for the most updated information. Dr. Don Westerhausen and I sat down this week to talk about the vaccine and about why we still have a mask mandate in place here at Christ the King when we're not recording worship on the web, that is. Access that video on the website or by clicking the link in Friday's email. During this month of February, the Community Missions Committee is collecting personal care items for the Tent City Homeless and clothing and food for Broadway Christian Parish. Please check the constant contact uh, email or the website or call the church for more specific information. Ash Wednesday, the start of the season of Lent, is this Wednesday, February 17th. Ashes in to-go containers will be available in the north and south vestibules beginning this Sunday. Uh, use these ashes to go in cooperation with Ash Wednesday Worship on the Web. If you would like to receive ashes on your forehead from a pastor, uh, drive up to the Cleveland Road entrance on Wednesday the 17th between 12 and 1 p.m. Uh, or at 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, stay in your car in that circle drive, uh, and one of us will come and uh, put the mark of the ash on your forehead. We have other Lenten resources available. If you're an adult, add meaning to your Lenten journey by picking up a devotional booklet called A Story to Tell. If you are young or young at heart, pick up a barn bank. The Sunday School is once again uh, collecting change to purchase farm animals through the ELCA Good Gifts Program. Thanks to a cold snap in the weather, we will not be having drive-in worship this Sunday, but the service will be broadcast on CTK's Facebook page Sunday at 9.30. Immediately following, Tammy Freeling will host a virtual Narthex coffee hour. As always, all are welcome. And now centering ourselves for worship, we pause for a moment of reflection. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of God, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you. Today, Sunday, February 14th, celebrated as Valentine's Day, also marks the end of the liturgical church season of Epiphany. This final Sunday after the Epiphany concludes the same way every year, with the celebration known as the Feast Day of the Transfiguration. It's, the, it's celebrating the story of, of Jesus leading three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up this mountain. And, and while there, Jesus is transfigured. Two prophets of old show up, Moses and Elijah. They engage Jesus in, in, in conversation. Peter, recognizing that something big had just happened, but he really doesn't know at all what that big thing is yet, he's rattled, he's shaken. He's rattled by the dazzling white appearance of Jesus' clothes. He, he's, he, he, he is bewildered by the presence of Moses and Elijah. And then he gets all hot to trot to, to pitch some tents and settle in on their spectacular camping adventure. And so Peter cries out to Jesus, it's so good to be here. And as that is happening, this, this meteorologic miracle of sorts, this, this cloud develops and overshadows all of them on the summit. Then a voice from the cloud. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. uninterested in, 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 in camping, Jesus leads Peter, James, and John back down the mountain. And all the while they're walking, he says this, listen, fellas, let's, let's just keep what we just all experienced up there on the mountain. Let's just make that a thing between us. Let's not let everybody know what happened just yet. It's just going to be our thing. That's the story we celebrate this morning. Now ask any preacher her or his favorite feast day Sunday to preach on, 
And, and I don't think that I'm going out on a limb here, but I'd wager that the feast day of the transfiguration has very few takers. I mean, even Pastor Caroline and I grumble at each other every year when we determine whose turn it is to be scheduled to preach on Transfiguration Sunday. So, yep, Sunday, February 14th, 2021. It's my turn. Now, you probably know me well enough by now to know that, that, that I, I, I'm not shy about fancying myself as being a pretty good preacher. Several years ago, the first comment a bishop of an Eastern Synod of the ELCA said to me during an interview, you wrote in your rostered leader profile, and I'm going to quote you now, you wrote, I am an exceptional preacher, end quote. And before the bishop could say anything else, I leaned in and I said, why, yes, I am. So you'd think with, with, with this sort of uh, conceited ego, I'd be up for the challenge of, of, of preaching any Sunday of the church year, on any feast day, on any biblical reading appointed for the Sunday. And you'd be right. Except for preaching the transfiguration of our Lord. You know, I, I'm not sure what it is, but there's, there's something about preaching the appointed gospel for the feast day of the transfiguration that's just ridiculously laborious for me. You know, maybe it's because of all the creation imagery the story stirs up in me or, 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 or due to the whole host of unanswered questions. Why did Jesus only take Peter, James, and John? Why did Elijah and Moses show up? And, and what are they talking with Jesus about? Why is Peter so interested in pitching tents? Why is God revealed to some, but not to others? Or, or, or perhaps it's unpacking the, the symbolism of that, that mysterious cloud and the, the dazzling white appearance on Jesus' clothes and the voice from the cloud. Or maybe it's explaining the, the difference of being transformed and being transfigured and why knowing makes a difference. It could be any or all of that. Might it also be because the story and events of the transfiguration just feel a bit underwhelming as a bridge or ending to a liturgical church season. I mean, after all, the season of Easter ends with the feast day of Pentecost and the story of masses of people gathered together in one place and sounds like the rush of a violent wind, tongues of fire dancing on heads, and the ability of people to understand one another each in their own languages. Or, or, or Pentecost concludes with the feast day of Christ the King, its bold proclamation that no matter who or what the brokenness of the world throws at us, consumes us, captivates us, the resurrected Christ Jesus still reigns. Christ is king. The season of Advent ends with the feast day of the nativity, with its story of, of joy and wonder at the birth of a child. This child lying in a manger, adoring parents, trying to make sense of it all. Giddy shepherds looking on with awe and amazement, while the chorus of the critters fills the silence of the night as the alleluias of the heavenly hosts fade away. Holy Week concludes with the gravestone rolled away, a linen wrapping placed where a body once was, best friends racing each other to the tomb and then leaving dejected, a woman pleading with the gardener, please, sir, please, sir, if you have taken the body, tell me where you have taken him. That voice that cries out, Mary, and as she turns, she becomes the first to experience the revelation of the risen Christ Jesus. That's how you conclude a liturgical church season, don't you think? And then there's Epiphany. 
epiphany. Ushering in the season of Lent with this paranormal camping trip that's not to be talked about. It does pale in comparison. So now what? Two of my and my wife, Pastor Caroline's classmates, are, are, are now professors at Luther Seminary. That was our alma mater. One is an Old Testament scholar, the other a New Testament scholar. Together with two other colleagues, the four scholars gather each week to record Sermon Brainwave. It's, a, it's an engaging weekly conversation on the Revised Common Lectionary, the, the book from which we take all of the readings you hear on Sunday mornings. Now, it's a, it's a resource that I, I rarely use. Pre-COVID, the weekly conversation was posted on the website, but only as an audio file. When I did log on to listen, with no images or, or, or video of the four, my ADD squirrel made it almost impossible for me to make it through the whole podcast. Now, I, I can't say for sure why, but for some reason, I logged on to Sermon Brave Wave last week. And to my great surprise, their weekly conversations are now available on YouTube. Listening and watching their conversation. And it was the conversation about what we're talking about today, the transfiguration story. One of my classmates said something I had never noticed, never heard anyone else say, and never considered myself. My classmate said this, the season of Lent begins and ends with Jesus on a mountain. The season of Lent begins and ends with Jesus on a mountain. And just noodle that for a little bit with me. Lent begins with Jesus on Mount Tabor, 30 miles west of the Sea of Galilee. It ends with Jesus in Jerusalem at Golgotha, the place of the skull, a mount of rock and stone. Lent begins with three of Jesus' disciples, Peter, James, and John, dumbfounded and frightened by what's going on around them. It ends with only John and three women dumbfounded, and frightened, kneeling beneath the cross. Lent begins with clothes of dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. It ends with a filthy, blood-stained tunic. Lots are being cast for its possession. Lent begins with Jesus surrounded by the two prophets of old, Moses and Elijah, all three deep in conversation. It ends with Jesus surrounded by two criminals, all three sentenced to death by crucifixion. Lent begins with the voice of God proclaiming, this is my son, the beloved Listen to him. It ends with Jesus' anguished cry. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lent begins with Peter claiming, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. It ends with the rabbi proclaiming, truly I tell you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. Lent begins with Jesus pleading with his friends to, to tell no one of what they had seen and heard. It ends 
with the Roman bystanders saying, truly this was the Son of God. Lent begins with the revealed God we want. It ends with the hidden God we get. The feast day of transfiguration. I I think I get it now. The story of the transfiguration isn't so much a story we are to fully interpret or completely understand. It's not about ruminating on creation imagery or answering the unanswered questions or, or, or unpacking the symbolism or explaining the difference between being transfigured and transformed and why it matters. The story of the transfiguration is a story that's meant to be experienced. A story that takes us from Mount Tabor to Mount Golgotha. It's a story that stirs up in us the dazzling brilliance of the kingdom yet to come in the risen Christ Jesus. It's a story that emboldens us to to journey truly as sisters and brothers in Christ, as the body of Christ in these 40 days of Lent. It prepares us. It prepares us to face our humility, our humanity, and the truth in our need for God. It is the story that assures us that whether revealed on Mount Tabor or hidden on Golgotha, God is with us. I really hope that's what it's about. Shall all
having experienced the transfiguration and preparing to journey through the season of Lent, we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark earth and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, and for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For all who suffer this day, that Christ our healer transform sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The holy table is set before us once again. And together we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
All are welcome. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The author of Ecclesiastes writes, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. As a sign of our repentance, we now say farewell to the Alleluia until our rejoicing at the resurrection of our Lord. How good it is for us to be here. Amen. Alleluia. 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 God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. It's the body of Christ. We are called and sent to love and serve the world. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Took the 
the day. Then Peter spoke to make of them a tabernacle place. A cloud appeared in glory as an accolade. They fell on the ground. A voice arrived, the voice of God, the face of God covered in a cloud. Love. 